My name is Brooke Dobney. I'm a professor of strategy at the Edwards School of Business in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Well, my research and innovation goes back about uh, 10 or 15 years when I really wanted to start looking at what were things that were important in organizations with respect to innovation and how they could develop innovation approaches that align with their current strategic approaches. Innovation is a pro or is a is a way of thinking and strategy is a process and and those two are mutually exclusive yet they're interdependent so I wanted to bring those two together. So my early research was on understanding how we could measure innovation, culture in an organization. And culture has been defined as the way uh, employees think and act and uh, so I wanted to get a measure of culture so we could actually help organizations help themselves by assessing their culture, giving them perspective on innovation and then helping them define where they need to go in the future to become more innovative. We found out very early on that there, was, uh, there wasn't a lot of research in the area of, of how, to def how to measure innovation. There was a lot of discussion around and research around what innovation was potentially, how it worked, uh, clusters, incubators, those kinds of things. But from an organizational perspective, we found that there really wasn't a, uh, there was not a, uh, a reliable, robust scientific methodology to measure innovation culture. There are a lot of proxies out there. Uh, but lots of, but many of them were not, uh, uh, you know, what I would call robust and sustainable. So that was what we set out to do very early on. It it, it levered off research we had done on market orientation and uh, the competitive fitness of organizations in in um, the uh, the industry in the U.S. industries in the U.S. And uh, the market orientation is a factor of, of innovation or is one of the dimensions of innovation amongst employees. So we built off of that and the way we went. And so recently, what research has evolved to not only do we have a good measure now, we've now used that measure in over 3,000 organizations and tens of thousands of employees in those organizations. We want to develop a global a global, uh, you know, a survey of innovation findings that we can use uh, to compare countries in terms of their innovation of the companies within those countries and that's what we've done. That's a recent research project. We've just completed it and I'll be presenting that here in terms of what are the scores across countries around the world and we've uh, looked at 10 different countries. The uh, findings range, uh, first of all, we, we, we already knew that those organizations that have higher innovation cultures uh, perform better. Uh, in terms of financial performance, so top line financial performance, so return on investment, market share, market growth. So we had those. We also had, we also have published papers that uh, delineated the uh, re uh, relationships between innovation, culture, and positioning of organizations from a strategic perspective. So this particular paper looked at not only uh, the different cultural uh, or the innovation levels of organizations across different cultures uh, in, com in countries. It also looked at the relationship between those innovation levels and practice processes and methodologies uh, used by those organizations. So we're starting to drill down now more into the organizational level. What we found out is that those organizations that have higher levels of innovation use different practices, processes, and methodologies. So there's significant correlations with what they do versus those that had low levels of innovation. And we figured that out by clustering the organizations by their innovation scores and then doing a correlation analysis uh, with respect to practices and processes and methodologies. So we did find quite a bit of significant findings uh, in, in, in those areas. The results of the research are probably best used by executives in companies versus, say, governments at policy level. Our, our approach has been that at the end of the day, where innovation really matters and what all the efforts are being directed towards in terms of government infrastructure are to helping organizations become more innovative. Uh, if they become more innovative and competitive, the country does better, the region does better, better economic output. So our approach has really been how can we help the organizations at the end of the day become more competitive and innovative. So it really focuses in on those things organizations can do by studying what organizations have done and been successful at. Uh, the 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 other side the you know the, the equation is what can government do infrastructure wise to help countries and jurisdictions to become more innovative we uh you know, we th those are all very helpful, and and uh, uh, you know, and it could range from from expenditures in certain sectors and industries to other things. We uh, 
you know, we tend to say like, concentrate on the organizations because we think that's the that that's at the end of the day what people are looking for in terms of uh, where the where, where the actual uh, value is created for the marketplaces at the organizational level. And I think the organizations, uh, my, my message to senior executives and organizations who want to become more innovative would be to focus in on those traits of the most highly innovative organizations that we have discovered. So for example, in the over 3,000 organizations we've looked at, we've discovered common traits of the top 25% of innovators. And those traits include having an innovation vision that's supported by management, uh, senior leadership and management, senior management, and that communication or that vision has to be communicated and supported within the organization. So that's the, one of the major traits. The other trait, the other traits include having uh, an, an unleashing create, uh, the creativity of employees. We we found that the issue is not that you don't have creative employees. The issue was that the cre the creativity was being boxed in by policies, rules, processes, and all those things and structures of bureaucracy. So being able to break those down and unleash that creativity, uh, you have to be able to, to measure what you're trying to, to, uh, to do. So measuring culture, managing that culture is also very important. And also allowing time and space and resources for innovation. So often we'll talk about innovation. Uh, that innovation is, is just a word in many organizations. It hasn't been tangibilized. So it remains rhetoric until you can turn that rhetoric into action. And so those true leaders actually make decisions. Some of those are very difficult decisions because they involve you know, switching of resources, and maybe you know, dropping off of people in organizations that no longer belong there because they haven't got the right cultural approach or, or attitudes. And, and then creating that environment that, that allows employees to do what they want to do or need to do in terms of behaviors. So we talk about, you know, a lot of our research has been uh, uh, predicated on the context, behavior, actions, outcomes. Uh, what kind of behaviors and actions do you want from your employees? And then create that context. We know if you change the context internally, you can change the actions and behaviors which then relate to outcomes. So that's what we would suggest to organizations and, uh, and senior leadership in particular. From a first timer at ISPM, I think it's a, a great conference. And the reason I say that is there's a nice, a nice uh, uh, balance between the academic uh, and then the practitioner. So we have people from, from all, first of all, all around the world. I think 25 or 29 countries are represented here, but also they're just not all academics. And I think the better we can bridge the, the gap between the applied and the academic, the better off we're going to be and the further out we're going to advance in what we do in terms of trying to, to spread the word on innovation and, and uh, to implement and help organizations with some of the theories and knowledge. So it's great. Toronto's a great city as well for it. Yeah, and you guys have been great hosts.